<sighs> hey, what it do, y'all? It's your boy E2 Blue coming back at you again, and it is uh, Monday, right? Yeah, Monday. We don't even know what the days of the week are anymore with this COVID nineteen. I'm just, I'm frankly, I'm just ready to get back to normal. Um, as you guys know, I'm furloughed, so I'm not working. Um, so it's getting real tight around this mug. So hope everybody's doing all right out there and um, YouTube land. Um, but hey, at least we got YouTube, guys. At least we got something to do, something to watch, something to figure out. Um, it just, uh, <laughs> the question that we have is like, <laughs> it's almost like when you was a kid, it's like, can I, can I go outside to play? It's like, uh, when is outside open again? Like, that's just how you feel. But, you know, it is what it is. Before I get into the topic of the discussion, though, I wanted to talk about, um, I meant to do it after it happened or whatever, but I just, I I got other stuff going on, so uh, I I didn't get a chance to do the video when I wanted to do it. But um, this whole Dak Prescott and TMZ coming out talking about you know they had thirty people at a party house party or whatever. So I'm gonna weigh in how I feel about it just real quick, just to clarify some things. So um, I've told you guys many a times when you know because if you notice like when stuff comes out, you don't hear me talking about it. Normally because I think it's BS and I'm like, there's no point in me wasting my energy on it. But I had some people in the comments asking me what I thought about it. So here it is. Um, I've, I've talked to you guys many times about this and I say all the time, me personally, I don't like to judge anyone or any situation until I know the facts. And I suggest that all of you guys do the same thing because it makes a smart person to realize that it takes a smart person to realize that like, you can't speak on anything that you don't know of or you can't justify a situation that you don't know. You don't have solid evidence or facts about that's with anything. So, yeah, you can have your own opinion about it, but wouldn't you rather know what's going on before you judge a person, especially when it comes to a person's character or anything that they do or things of that nature, especially with everything going, everybody's judgmental about stuff. I'm, I'm not one to judge people. It is what it is now. If you've been living under a rock, you don't know. TMZ came out with a report saying that Dak Prescott had a party of 30 people, um, blase, blase, you know, violating the um, stay-at-home rule and violating the six-feet-apart rule or whatever. But this is the thing. You look at the video, there's a lot of things that, like, say that that doesn't make sense. So... When you look at the food that Dak Prescott had, um, that's not enough to feed 30 people, first of all. Um, and then they said that he had a sit-down dinner party. Probably. And maybe they didn't sit six feet apart. But that's I look at it like this. If it's a small group of people, hey, that's y'all business. Do what you do. But um, I just and, – and when you look at the video, it didn't seem like it was 30 people there. Like when you look at – when you listen to the audio and the people that are around there – it doesn't seem like 30 people. That food wasn't enough to feed 30 people. These football players got money, so they're they're going to have lavish parties. It just didn't seem like that. Now, my word of advice for Dak Prescott going forward, or especially Zeke, because TMZ loves to talk about Ezekiel Elliott. It's almost like that's like their biggest thing. Oh, Zeke is Zeke, and we're going to talk about Zeke, and we're going we're gonna to tear down Zeke's character. They've been doing that ever since he entered the league. But my word of a wise for Dak Prescott would be going forward, since you know that you are the franchise quarterback of Dallas Cowboys, you know that people talk about the Dallas Cowboys 24-7, people make money off the Dallas Cowboys 24-7, people that love to hate the Dallas Cowboys 24-7. Um, there's nothing to talk about because of the coronavirus, there's no sports going on, so we're going to talk about the Dallas Cowboys. So because of that reason... You should already have a notion going on in your mind that, hey, in this situation, how about when you guys come to my house, put your phones up, no cameras. I would confiscate. I would have my doorman or whoever my butler is, because if I'm if I'm a football player, I got somebody to answer the door. I ain't answering the damn devil. But anyway, whoever is there, I would confiscate all your phones. I would put it in like a little dish, a Petri dish or something. I would put it somewhere. There's no recording in mi casa, okay? So, again, if you work, even if that goes to working out, stop. These players need to stop putting their workout videos out there because, again, I understand they want everybody to see them, but 
put the shit up. You know, do the shit privately. Why are you recording what stuff that you're doing? But whoever was there to record it and send it to TMZ, shame on them. But, I mean, it just makes the situation look bad. Now, I'm not trying to protect Dak Prescott or any of that because I'm a fan or whatever. has nothing to do with that. I just look at the facts. The police officer came to the house himself and said in the report that it didn't seem like they were violating anything uh, with the COVID-19 rules or anything like that. So... If the police officer said that there was nothing violating, why is TMZ putting this out um, trying to, you know, slander these cowboy players? And then everybody, because, you know, America's dumb, right? Because people don't do research on their own. People just listen to everything people say without doing their research. So without doing your research, I always do my research, especially as a YouTuber, because I, I don't want to look dumb. I'm not always right. Nobody's always right. But at the end of the day, I try to be as right as possible when I'm bringing content to you guys because of the simple fact that when I talk about a situation, I want to make sure I got facts to back it up. That's just the way it should be. Um, but yeah, if the police officer says that they didn't violate anything, God damn it, they didn't violate anything. So my my the way I feel about it, it is what it is. So, you know, no more talking about it because I ain't going to talk about it no more. But that's all I had to say about that. Now, sorry that it, that was long-winded. I didn't mean it to be six minutes on that. But um, the topic of discussion, the kicking game. So our kickers, you know, I did the video when Greg Zerline first got um, signed by the Dallas Cowboys. A lot of people was wondering about it and like, well, why would we sign him if we already have Kyle Forbath and things of that nature? This is the thing. Um, you want competition on your team. And before Jason Garrett left, and I know that his regime was gone, before he left, he he always had a saying. And, and you know, we always joke about Jason Garrett. We talk trash about him. And, and, and a lot of it is warranted. It is. It is. Because he's terrible. But um, he is a good dude. And I will say that some of the things that he said were right. You know, you know. We like competition. We like to provide competition because, again, when you have competition at your positions, the person that's in that position can't be comfortable. Because what happens when a player gets comfortable, um, they get lazy and then they start playing terrible. So you want your players at top notch ability every day. You want them to go out there and show their grit and how good they are every single day without, you know. Because you're looking like, well, this guy was a good player, but why is he not anymore? You know what I mean? So, like, that that you don't want. So, by saying that, I, I, I say this. Now, we know that the Dallas Cowboys, and as fans, we look at this team. We've had Dan Bailey for a while. Um, before that, the, the next best kicker before Dan Bailey was Beeler. I love David Beeler. When David Beeler was the... Was the um, I talked about him before in the video. I liked him as a kick. He had a real strong leg, but he was big as an ox. He was like Leighton Vander Esch, but a kicker. That's what he was. He was like a linebacker kicker. They could have put him out there on defense, and he probably would have pro produced. That's that's how much I, I love David Beeler when he he was here in the early two thousands. Now then then Dan Bailey. You know we've had a lot of kickers in between. You know that that didn't fit the bill. But you look at I'm talking about the solid guys. You're talking about David Beeler. You're talking about Dan Bailey. Dan Bailey had you know injuries in the in in the latter part of his career, which ultimately um, made him get released. Now. I don't agree with the fact that he got released because we ended up getting Brett Maher, Maharati, not Maher. So with the emergence of, of, of Brett Maher, you know, they loved his ability to kick the ball 60 plus yards or whatever and make it into the field goal, uh, into the goal post. And, 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 you know, they were fascinated by that, which I think was dumb because again, you got to look at the guy's overall kicking ability. Now, he may have shown you that in training camp, but at the same time, you get into the you get into the the, the games, the real games, and he's missing thirty yarders. Why are you missing thirty yarders? Stop doing that. So when when we talk about these players, and you know that's why we said competition is great. When Greg Zerline got signed, everybody was like, "Oh, why did they sign him?" Me personally, I looked at it like this. It was it was good. It was a good thing. And I'm talking about the kickers right now because ain't nobody talking about them. They're always forgotten about. You know, special teams is not a thing that people talk about now. But I just wanted to clarify because Greg Zerline said 
um, in this interview that I plan to win the starting job. Basically, like, I'm going to be it. Now, of course, they use that as a headline quote because, you know, it stands out. Um, and as a player, you should always be confident within yourself. That's always, always be confident. Um, so I love his confidence. Now, let us let me break down a little bit of numbers of all three of the kickers. N now, I'm talking about Brett Maher, too. So as we as I like to go into a segment called the kicking fiasco, right? So Brett Maher, when he was with the team, he had a dismal, a dismal kicking percentage of 66.7%, right? He missed 10 kicks, 10 kicks from 30 yards or greater. But wait a minute. And I know you guys are thinking, wait a minute, E2, but I thought you said that he was great at kicking 50 and 60 yarders. Yeah, he was, but he wasn't consistent. He was good enough to beat out David, I mean, Dan Bailey, but I feel like they, Dan, they, I feel like that they cut Dan Bailey too soon. He ultimately went to the Vikings and he's doing all right with the Vikings. Now, the thing about Dan Bailey, he had, um, what is it? The uh, hamstring injuries and groin injuries. When you have, when you're a kicker and you have any upper leg, thigh, soft tissue injuries, it is going to affect your kicks very much so. And as a kicker, you can lose focus like this. It's it's one of those positions where we forget about kicker because we think that it it doesn't matter in football because it's not a skill position. But for somebody like me that has played football, even though I've never been a kicker, I always have respect for those guys because it's a lot of pressure to be a kicker. Even though you just come in and do that and step out of the field, every time you kick is a pressure situation. You look at other positions on the field, it's not a pressure situation 24-7. But when you're a kicker, you are under pressure, under fire, everything. So if you miss one, people are saying you suck. When in actuality, we know that every actuality, we know that everybody is not perfect. But that's how we judge it because that's all you do is kick. So kick. We expect you to be perfect. That's just unfortunately, that's just the way the way of the land. That's just the way the sports work. Now, with his dismal Brett Maher, I'm talking about with his dismal 66.7 percent misses uh, percent and then 10 misses from 30 yards out. So the Dallas Cowboys decide to wait all the way till December to want to allow him to go, to release him, to let the Maharati drive out of the building because that's not Maher anymore. Now, as we talk about Brett Maher, um, he's gone. Thank you. But they brought in Kai Forbath, and I know that Kai Forbath was probably still on the team at the time, and I think that, I don't know if they were waiting for him to get released or whatever the situation was, but it was great for the Dallas Cowboys. If you guys remember, we had Kai Forbath in the beginning um, of his career when he was came out as a free agent. He he tried out for the Dallas Cowboys, but Dan Bailey beat him out when Dan Bailey's first year was. It's ironic how the world, it's like a it's like a cycle, and, 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 and everything goes back to form. And it's funny how that's how it is with with NFL kicker well NFL players careers it just comes back tenfold now we signed um Kai Forbath in December he played four games for us and he made all of his kicks 10 for 10 now Kai Forbath is a much better kicker than he was when we when we saw him when he came out as a free agent in the beginning we saw that undrafted guy when we saw that now um that's great four games 10 for 10 you know it's a small sample, and, it, and it's got his fans looking like, oh, this is our guy for the future. So as a result of winning that, excuse me, the Cowboys awarded him a one-year contract for this season. Then you fast forward to, what was it, last month? The Cowboys out of nowhere signed Greg Zerline. And we're like, what the hell happened? Why are we signing Greg Zerline? We already got a starting kicker. So... Let me give you a couple of options, right? One, and a lot of people are not thinking about this, with the new CBA rules, you can ultimately have two kickers on the roster if you want. Now, both of these guys are not practice squad eligible because they are veterans. They're super veterans. They don't have practice squad eligibility, so you can't stick them on a practice squad. Those of you that may ask me in the comments, that you can't do that. So, um, and I'll explain that in a minute. So, 
But Greg Zerline be here, being here, the Dallas Cowboys wanted him for a long time, even before his special teams coordinator came over here. They've always loved Greg the leg. Now, he's had a similar career like, like Dan Bailey, where he had a bad season and it didn't look too right for him, which is with ultimately why he's not on the Rams anymore. Now, from what he said in his interview, he said that, damn, John Fossil's not here anymore. This guy brought me into the Rams. I thought I was going to be a Ram for my whole career. Um... John Fossil brought me in. He's gone. He's with Dallas. And he started thinking like, hmm, the Rams released me, so maybe I could go to Dallas. So I think a lot of that was a big mutual agreement for him coming to Dallas. The Cowboys wanted him. He definitely wanted to come here. He wanted to um, re reunite with his um, special teams coordinator, Bones. So him and Bones are back together again. And I think that with John Fossil here, um, it's going to be good for Greg Zerline. He's going to get back to his form. Now, the bad seasons that he had, and I'm going to give you the, the numbers on that in a second. The bad season that he had was primarily due to um, his mental. Like, he wasn't into it that year. He was probably having some personal issues, which, of course, he didn't say in the interview. I think that, you know, we all go through things. Hell, I'm going through things right now in life that you guys will never even know about. But I try to keep a smile on my face every day. But because of that, you know, you never know what people are going through. And a lot of times when you're doing things, if it messes with you mentally, it's like a psych out. And you end up doing bad and you don't play as well. You don't do what you need to do as well. So with that, with that, you have that. And then on the other end, he, he had some injuries and stuff he was going through. So that 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 plays a big factor in your playing ability. Now. His name was Greg the Leg for a reason because earlier in his career he was a beast. Now I know that you know the last two seasons wasn't his best, but you know he tried. He tried. Now as far as Greg Zarline goes, we know he was signed for with the Cowboys for three years, seven point five million with two hundred two two point twenty five million guaranteed. Now people look at that and be like, "Damn!" When you look at that, you would assume that he is going to be the starter over over Kai Forbath because. He's got a three-year contract as opposed to Kai's one year. And because his old uh, special teams coordinator is now his new special team coordinator <laughs> with the Dallas Cowboys. So you would think that Greg's got the upper hand. But in actuality, Dallas Cowboys want to create competition wherever they can. And, I, and I'm all for it. I'm all for the competition. Now, Greg says that, hey, I know Kai Forbath because he came in with the Rams when he was a free agent to try out for the team or whatever. Um, so, you know, they kind of know each other. So he was like, there's no animosity there. It's just good. It's just good fun. Why can't we just keep friendships, friendships and job jobs? So we can't let a job come through between friendships now. So Greg the leg. So in with the Rams, I think his last season, he was 72.7%. And that was, still was better than what Brad Maher did. So either one of these kickers are better than what we had with Brad Maher. So don't fret guys. Um, he missed eight kicks from 40 yards or greater that season. And in 2017 was his one of his best years when he was 95% accurate. So that, you know, he he's he was coined Greg the leg for a reason. Um now, last thing before I end the video. Um sorry if it's too long. I, I just I had a lot of information. I just had to get it to you. Now, last last note. Um this competition right here is good now if for whatever reason because both of these kickers are good i like both of them i like both of them i really do i like kai and i like greg if just say for whatever reason like i said earlier in the video when i was talking about with the new cba rules you can have multiple kickers on your team for depth purposes you can if you if you can um Slide away from another position and have less in another position. You could do what you could do. Um, if for whatever reason these guys come in and they both kick dynamically, like and they like like it's a photo finish and they're even. I might wanna, I might wanna, you know, um, I might wanna keep both of them because if one does great or one has a bad game, you could switch them out. Why not? If you got the space in your roster, do it. If you got, if you have the space, do it. I if they if they decide to keep both kickers after they and if they can't decide who they want to keep and they want to keep both, hey, I'm all for it. 
Kai only got one year anyway, so you have him for this year. And then if Greg does good this season, you still got him for two more years afterwards. So you're good either way. That's just how I feel. Let me know what you guys think about the kicking situation and the Dak situation. Sorry for the video being too long. I just had to get that information out because I didn't get a chance to do the video before. But thanks again to all my subscribers. I appreciate you guys um, for what it's worth. Um, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and support your boy. Go ahead and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Get your... Just, just, just get it. Just get this content. It's your boy E2 Blue. Always keeping it real. Talk to y'all soon.